And the Future of Humanity Institute is a unique attempt to try to apply the same rigorous analytic standards that you would expect elsewhere uh, in the university uh, to the really big picture questions for humanity. Right now we are pursuing three streams of research. Um, one of them is um, the um, ethical and practical implications of using technology to uh, transform human nature, so human enhancement technologies. Uh, and this poses um, a number of challenges um, and questions about whether, how and in what context such technologies should be used. And this is interesting because um, most other things uh, affect us only indirectly by first changing the external world and then we interact with it and that changes us. But if you have something that can affect human biology directly, um, that's potentially very powerful and it's worth thinking about carefully. Uh, the second stream of research that we are pursuing is global catastrophic risks. So this is looking at the really uh, uh, big threats to humanity, maybe low probability but high consequence hazards. Um, including at the extreme end threats to human survival and then threats to the global civilization. And the third stream of research is um, methodology and rationality. Um, so that third stream of research studies uh, the problems uh, of dealing with uncertainty um, in relation to these big picture issues for humanity. Um, and um, um, it sounds boring with methodology, but it's, um, it's really about trying to develop a, a set of methodological tools and, and thinking techniques so that you can begin to address these big questions in a rigorous way. For an institute, um, with our focus of being situated within the James Martin 21st Century School, is really perfect um, because we are surrounded by a number of other groups and scholars who are addressing various aspects and facets of big challenges for humanity in the 21st century. Um, and that greatly amplifies our ability to, to sort of see around the problems that exist. And um, the school is a unique opportunity for um, scholars who would otherwise be locked into uh, the strictures of their disciplinary home um, to sort of lift their heads up and, and begin to think about the things that might really interest them, but that are really important and that have practical significance in an interdisciplinary way. What's also really exciting is to see how around this uh, core there is beginning to emerge a, a wider set of people who should, are very interested in what the school is doing, um, both here at Oxford and at other universities and outside uh, the world of academia. And I think if the school can serve as sort of the catalyst um, or the grain around which something larger can crystallize, that could really make a valuable difference in terms of humanity's ability to, to reflect about where it is going and, and to tackle these big challenges heads on. There are a number of high leverage points where um, a huge amount is at stake, but very uh, small amounts of resources are devoted to trying to figure out what we need to do. One of those points is existential risks. Um, the consequences of an existential risk are as big as the consequences can be, and yet there is uh, pretty much nobody in the world who is working full-time on understanding existential risks. Uh, whether there are any, how big they are, and if so, what we can do about them. Um, another of these high leverage points is thinking about prioritization. So there are thousands or tens of thousands of really interesting topics that an academic could study. And, you know, there are tens of thousands of good causes that a philanthropist could find. Um, but out of these tens of thousands of possible choices, how do you pick one? Do you just go with your gut or do you pick whatever happens to come in front of you? Um, or is there a better way? Is there some way that you could approach this um, um, rationally? Now, if there is such a way, we could discover some insight into this better way of prioritizing and realizing what's really important, then that discovery itself would be a tremendously uh, valuable contribution because it could help direct resources and attention 
to the places where it can really make a difference.